What's going on everyone and welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Sarah. This is my dog Toby and we're in the middle of building another little home on wheels. If you're interested to see how it all turns out, make sure you stick around because we show you exactly how we get it done. Today in this video, we're going to be covering all of the pre-wiring stuff that I got done for my van. I did do this a couple weeks ago around the same weekend I did my flooring. Things happened. I was out of town. It was raining a lot. Not that that matters because it's raining right now and I'm in my van. I can do the pre-wiring just fine. Sorry, ranting. I just, I was not in a great headspace. I lost a lot of creative motivation in my mind. So, but we're back. We're back and we're better than yesterday. I can't say it was better than ever, but it was definitely better than yesterday. So yeah, let's, let's tackle the pre-wiring stuff. And this time I'll give you a little bit more insight of what's going on and what I've been using. But in a later video, when I actually start doing the electrical system itself, start putting it all together, I will get into more depth of what it is I'm using, why I'm using it, what they are, just in hopes to help other people out with their electrical build journey. Cause I definitely had a struggle and it was so hard finding information that was just in layman's terms, just electrical stuff for dummies. And it, it, I went all over the map trying to figure out this information, but I feel really confident, so confident in everything that I learned that I, I really think I deserve my degree in electrical engineering, I'm just saying. Who can give that to me? Who can give that to me? Just kidding. Okay. Anyway, let's uh, let's go. Let's do this. Let's wire this dang van. Let's uh, see if me opening the sliding door brings in some light. Ooh. Is that okay? Okay. So I have this conduit. This is half inch half inch conduit to protect my wires. When I was pre-wiring a couple weeks ago, I noticed as I was taking it out and putting it in, a lot of the coating had been stripped from, you know, the edges of the van. So I, with my van moving around as much as it will, I wanna make sure everything is protected and to prevent fires as much as possible, cause that would suck. Right, Toby? Yeah, as soon as I said fire, he went, what? Fire? Not here. Not for us. Anyway, I need to figure out how I'm gonna do this. Okay, cool, so this, oh, this is nice. So I, I wasn't sure what this was gonna be. I thought it was just gonna be a big old tube that I have to like sift through, but they actually have a slit, so you can tuck it in there too. Okay, this is gonna be nice. This is gonna be very nice. Honestly, it's kinda, Okay, we're gonna change things up. I thought that putting the conduit around and then feeding the wires through that was gonna be the easiest thing to do, but I'm starting to think I should just pre-wire like I normally did, just with the naked wire, and then have the conduit eat it. Because I can't push it through. So I just used up all of my 14 gauge wire on most of my DC appliances, but not all of them. And I have 12 gauge wire to finish up the job. For the 14 gauge wire, I used it for my fan, a USB port, puck lights, both, I'm gonna have puck lights underneath cabinets and then puck lights around the ceiling. So for both of those, and then for both my lamps that I'm gonna have on the other side of my bed. And that's all I had space for. So the remaining, my fridge, my toilet fan, my pump switch, or sorry, my pump for my sink, my heater that I don't have, and a few extras. I think, I think this should be enough. I feel like this should be, just my, my marker. Oh, you are very high. Okay, so I'm gonna stop for the rest of the day. I got most of it in, but I came across a little snag. My 12 gauge wire, the marine wire, I can't cut it. I don't have the tools to cut it. Yet again, just another tool issue getting in the way of my progress, but that's okay, that's fine. I'll catch you sometime this week. It's Sunday right now, and then I start work again tomorrow and then go back to the office on Tuesday. 
So I'm not sure when I'm gonna get back to pre-wiring. Okay, so I invested in a light so I can do work inside of my van when it's gloomy and doomy outside in the dark and we don't have super pixelated video content. However, it's so dang bright, I am blind. <laughs> but I can't have it any lower because it's otherwise so dark in here. It is, um, it's 12.30 in the afternoon right now, but if you can hear it, it's raining. So it's very dark and gloomy in here, but that's not gonna stop me. I got a lot of work to do, so let's, let's get to it. Stop slacking and let's cracking. No, no. <laughs> let's see how this goes. I'm, let's, let, okay, let me, let me play with this for a little bit. Okay, so the last time I touched any of the pre-wiring stuff, it was, it seems like a month ago, honestly, when I was doing the flooring. What stopped me was that when I started putting my marine wire in, I I couldn't cut it because it's it's thick, it's thick and sticky, and I didn't have the right tool to cut it. But that's okay, I got it now, and I just want to just want to finish it up. Okay, so I feel like I didn't mention this before, so I'm going to talk about it now, and that is what I'm even doing and what I'm using to wire up my entire van. So just like any other van out there on the market, all the videos you've seen, it's gonna be primarily or like 95% DC or a 12 volt system. I will have an inverter and I will talk more about my entire electrical setup when we get to that part of the build. For now, I'm just gonna talk about how I'm doing the pre-wiring aspect of it. I will have an inverter, as I said, so that I can have uh, plugs in here to use higher voltage items. So to pre-wire my DC appliances, I've been using this beautiful number right here. It is a 14 aug wire, 14 aug wire. I did end up getting just one spool of it and that is so far to be more than enough for all the puck lights that I'm gonna have in here and all of like the little low voltage items I will have. Heavier hitting items that are also still 12 volt but just a little heavier hitting. I have this 12 aug wire, marine grade wire. So these numbers from my understanding and my knowledge that I have acquired in the past six months, the smaller the number is, the bigger the wire. The bigger the number is or the higher the number is the smaller the wire. Here's just a quick tip. I'm not going to get into it again in this video, but something to absolutely 1000% consider when you are doing your electrical system, always have in the back of your mind, is this the right wire size? Okay. What size wire should like is appropriate for this kind of uh, voltage for this type of energy. Once you start getting to the heart of the system, like where the battery is and the battery being charged by all of your different methods, solar, onshore, DC to DC, whatever it is, uh, you need the smallest number, AKA the largest wire. I'm prepared with uh, these two watt wires, two gauge wires. Uh, for that part of the build. And we'll get to that when we get to that, but for now we're doing what needs to be put against the wall. So <sighs> I hope that was even remotely interesting. Okay, so without further ado, I'm gonna continue wiring away and I'm, I'm, I'm seriously almost done. I just need to finish up with these guys. And then once I'm done with that, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna put this conduit all around it, especially the ones, especially these, these naked fellas over here. for comfort. Uh, hey, how's it going? Okay, so I just finished pre-wiring all of my 12 volts 
Oh! I forgot to do my AC. Hold on. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna do the AC appliances next, which is literally going to be just two plugs, two sets of plugs, one kind of near my bed and one towards the front of the van. So this is what I'm working with. This should be more than enough for just two plugs. It's going to connect to a fuse box that I have. And from that fuse box, it that will connect to my inverter, inverter charger, actually. I have an inverter charger. So again, we can get into that in a later video when I actually start talking about my electrical system. But for now, just keep it on your mind. So this is a 12 gauge, 25 foot of 12, electrical wire 20 amp rating and it has a SJ 00W jacket does that mean anything to you I don't know but this is nice like this is this looks secure okay so look right here Ooh, can you see it okay so we got three wires here we got a positive a negative and a ground and that's what you need for AC appliances you need three wires that's the core difference between I mean there's many differences but that's one difference if you could just hold on to one piece of knowledge on the difference between DC and AC appliances if you want to know just like right off the bat the difference between AC and DC you'll see this is the DC one it has two wires just a pause and a neg and then here's my AC wire which has three a, po a positive, a negative, and a ground. So, so yeah. Let's. What does twenty amp rating mean? Let's Google this real quick. What do amp ratings mean? Amp hour is the rating used to tell consumers how much amperage a battery can provide for one given hour. What does twenty amp rating? mean for wire let's be more specific the maximum current that can flow through a circuit element or conductor must not exceed its ampacity ampacity <laughs> like amp capacity is that a real word or did they just make that up? I don't know. Okay. For example, if a piece of 12 aug copper has a has an ampacity of 20 amps, this means that we cannot send more than 20 amps through it without overheating melting down the wire. Okay, that's good to know. Okay. The biggest heavy hitting items that I imagine myself pushing through this wire would be a blender a blow dryer. I hesitate because I don't usually blow dry my hair, but I wanted the option to. And like hair um, appliances, like a hair straightener or curling iron. So let's um, let's see what those have. <laughs> Average amp for blow dryer. Okay, we're good. Okay, so for a blow dryer, 15 amps. 18 or 15 amps. I know, ooh, that was 2016. Okay, okay, so it takes, this 1875 wattage means that it will take most of an entire 20 amp circuit all by itself, so don't use this while your spouse is using another one on the same circuit or you'll blow a breaker. Okay, so we're on the edge here with my blow dryer. Maybe I'll need a new hair dryer. Straightener, three, four, sixty, ten. Okay, I think we're, we're getting somewhere. Um, average blender amps. Blender five to six amps. Okay, so let's let's go specifically for the Ninja. 12 and a half amps. Okay, I think we're good. Did we just learn something today? We, we did, we absolutely did. So when you're looking for your wiring for your, for your AC plugs, for your AC appliances that you will plug into your plugs, get the 12, 20 amp, get the 20 amp wire. This should be sufficient for the amount of amps that you will be pushing through if you're using a blow dryer or a blender. It is mo it is enough. For my inverter, char my inverter charger, I picked out the 2000 watt one, and I think that's more than enough. I, with that 2000 watt, I was already anticipating to never have more than one thing plugged in and being used at a time. And what it's telling me also is that that's the case with this wire as well. I shouldn't be plugging more than one thing at a time when I have this. And I'm wondering how much, how many amps does it take to charge a laptop okay one to four we're good so i can charge a bunch of stuff at once that'll be fine but i couldn't like use a heavy hitting appliance with this wire okay i think we're good let's just let's do this now
exact amount that I needed, which is fantastic. So let me show you. Let me give you a little pre-wire tour now, shall we? Starting here, this is where the heart of the electrical system is going to be. I imagine a fuse box um, or fuse panel to be located here to host both my AC wires and my DC wires. So moving right along, if you look up this way, this is where I plan on having my bed or the head of my bed. So those two wires over there, it's going to be for my lamps, my little lamps that also have a USB port attached to them. Down here, I have two wires actually. One is for my heater and the other is for the toilet fan. This is gonna be a bench area where I will have my toilet located underneath and then potentially, hopefully, I don't know, my future heater will also be next to that. Going up the ladder, over here we have a couple 14 uh, aug wires. This is where I plan to put LED puck lights underneath my cabinet that will be up there. Over here I have an extra wire for the switch to function the LED light. I also have of one for USB ports. And then we have our wires here to put plugs, to have a plug right above my bench. Okay, moving right along, we're gonna go up here through our wire sky bridge, find our way to the other side of the van. Okay, so right up here, we have an extra piece right there. And then this is gonna be where the switch, or that's for the switch for the LED puck lights that will be coasting across the ceiling. I do have an extra lengthy wire sitting in a box next to me that is well be using to parallel install the LED lights when it gets once, once we get to that point. All right moving right along we come down here to the bottom I have another set of three wires for another plug that I'll have. This is going to be the kitchen area so need that for the blender that I hope to use and then these two are for one is for the fridge and one is for the sink pump and I think that's I think that's all of it. What's going on? Okay, hi, so that was exciting. I'm happy I finally got the pre-work, or sorry, I'm happy I finally got the pre-wiring done. That honestly was, I would say that was the easiest part of the entire van build thus far. And all I needed to do was know what wires I needed and how many I needed and just throw them back there. So the next step I need to do is build out my garage walls and finish building my wheel boxes. Uh, once that is completed, I will be able to do the actual electrical work. So I mentioned this many times in the video already. I didn't go into detail about any electrical stuff. I mean, some things, but not the stuff that you would probably want to know about. And I will do that in like the next, in another video. I don't know which one it's going to be, but in another video, I'll go into detail of how I put it all together and what I I'm using, why I'm using it, and basically everything that I learned to get me to be able to do this with the confidence that I have. So, okay. Anyway, I'm, I feel like I'm ranting per usual. Happy to have you here. If you haven't already, don't forget to like and subscribe because I'm having a lot of fun doing this build and filming it and sharing it with the world. And I would love to see more of you on here. So I think, I think that's all I got for you. That's all folks. Okay, bye.